Background or focal point? Let's do an easy watercolor two ways. Hey guys, it's Kate. I'm here today with a double tutorial for beginners with my new water uh, watercolor set from Mozart. I am doing two quick abstracts here, one of them that could be used for more of a background, maybe even collage paper. Um, you could put a design on top of it, or you can choose to do a focal point. And it's kind of amazing how the same painting, just with the objects in a little bit of a different area, can look completely different. So today we're going to be working with watercolors, so grab your set. And then we will also have some alcohol inks, which actually you can use regular alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Um, I actually used homemade inks in this video. And if anybody wants to know how I make those, I can create a video on that. They're super easy and really fun to use. And so what I do is I keep them in a spray bottle, but I also have a dropper bottle handy to uh, drop it where I want if I want more than a spray. So I'm just starting off making a quick background here um, using three colors to keep things kind of simple, dividing my paper into thirds. And you can use any color that works for you that you like. Um, and then I spray it with some water to get it to spread more. So here I am grabbing my alcohol ink and it just is really nice and pigmented. And if you do it while the paint and the water is still wet on your page, you'll get a really neat texture effect. And so it kind of pushes aside the watercolor and makes these really neat uh, bubbles, kind of. <laughs> so I did teal, and I'm also going back in with some purple. And that purple comes out really nice and dark from the bottle. So I'm just scattering some dots here to make a background. And once I finish all these dots, I'm going to go ahead and let it dry. And so now I am going in with the Jelly Roll pen and doodling some flowers. So I had decided to go with the dark circles uh, with the white Jelly Roll. And then I'll go in with a black fine liner on the teal uh, bubbles on there. Well, I guess flowers, not bubbles. <laughs> so I'm just doing some little doodle flowers, just really simple. And really, you could do anything you want. The contrast with the mark making just kind of makes it pop on the dark color. Now, if you are using plain alcohol, you could use another contrasting paint or something like that. Maybe drop some more watercolor into it after the alcohol. So uh, just kind of play around and see what works best for you. And I love doodling on watercolor and I love the transparency that it that it adds. Uh, for this one, I used my favorite turquoise <laughs> and some yellow and uh, a pink color. And I actually don't remember right now which one I grabbed out of the palette. When I draw these flowers, it reminds me of when I was a little kid and I used to be in the classroom and I doodled these little flowers all day. <laughs> when we were listening to lectures and stuff, it was just, I, I wanted to always do something with my hands. So my school notebooks have these little flowers all over them and it always brings back that memory when I doodle them now. So in the turquoise uh, blobs, <laughs> I'm doing little spirals in the black fine liner uh, just to add that extra contrast and texture. And I'm just working my way around the page, trying not to get my hand dipped into any wet ink that's on the surface. So just being careful there. I don't want to smear it since I'm spending time to put it on. Now, something like this would be really nice as a background, I think. If you added something else to it, some other focal point in a future project, you can also cut it up and use it in collage. It's got some good texture, some good color transformations, and you could do a lot with it for sure. 
So we're going to call that one done. And once I do my little finishing touches and kind of look it over, I will put that aside and get started on a new one. And just to kind of demonstrate the different look with placing objects differently, even though they're done the same, I am doing the same colors again for the background. and spreading them out the same way. So I've got the turquoise there, putting it in the center, and then using my pink and yellow and spraying that with water to get it to spread out a bit and kind of meld together. Now on this second one, I used a little bit more water than I intended. The spray kind of got away from me. So after I get it all down on the paper, I do go over the sides with the paper towel just a little bit to get up some excess water. And I also ran into a little bit of a problem when I was dropping my alcohol, but ended up with a solution for that. So it turned out pretty well. <laughs> But I really love these Mozart paints. I've done a couple videos on them now, and I love how pigmented they are. And they don't um, move quite as much as other paints, but certain colors really do. Like the turquoise loves to spread out, and you can really see that on this paper here, which, by the way, is B watercolor paper. It's 100% cotton. I'm using a 6 by 9 sheet. So I'm dropping my alcohol on here. Um, and for this one, I'm concentrating more in the top half to, you know, kind of like that middle third section. I'm going to put the darker purple to have the larger flowers. And so I'm dropping several drops instead of just one or two so that I can have a bigger focal point uh, toward the top. And I'm going to make it look like a bouquet of flowers versus just some flower heads on a background on the page. Now in my last alcohol drop, it started to kind of flow into the turquoise alcohol ink that I dropped. And so it sort of became this oval versus a round shape. So I ended up um, doing that like a flower from the side. And where I put the drops, there was a little faint outline um, where I kind of put my petals later, but you'll see that as we move along. So I'm just blotting up some extra water that's pooling at the edge. Um, and then I am going to let this one dry as well. And then we'll come back in and we'll get to work with the Jelly Roll pen. Gosh, I still keep looking at the purple and remembering as I'm doing this voiceover, how I was just horrified that it was just bleeding into the turquoise. <laughs> if you ever worked on something that you're just, you spent time on it and then it does not happen the way you planned, but you know, that's the way fluid art is. So you just have to plan to do something a little bit different. So I think I saved it here. So that's another tip. There's always going to be a fix if something happens that you don't plan for or don't expect. And actually, I don't even know if I would need to do a tutorial on making the alcohol inks. Honestly, um, I watched a few videos online and stuff about making them with like the Sharpies. So I tested it at home and I got some spray bottles and I got these permanent markers. They were like from Walmart. I think I just did a test and the videos I watched in the past, they had, you know, cut open the ink things and all of this. And I was just thinking, okay, what if I don't do that? And I just pop those bad boys in a bottle of alcohol. And sure enough, it's still working fine to this day. I've been using these for a really long time and they've held up great. The ink all comes out into the alcohol. So you really don't have to go through all that mess and fuss. Just pop the color in, get a couple labels from Dollar Tree before you put the marker in there, scribble on the front so you can see what color it is and write down the color of the marker if you want to refill it and you're done. It's so easy. 
And you really can use any markers you want to. <laughs> so I am finishing up here. And I decide to add some stems to the bottom and just kind of, I don't know, draw it like a bundle, you know, just so that there's some more interest down at the bottom. It just feels obviously off balance if you have everything on one side. But um, I really like how it turned out with the black fine liner and just kind of bringing those stems all the way to the bottom of the page. Now, it is like your flowers are floating in the air a bit, but... You know, this is imagination, so of course that'll work, and they will absolutely stay there with no support. And I'm just making sure that I connect a stem to every flower and make sure that they're all together in this little bundle. And I really like how this turned out. So tell me, which do you like better? And as far as the background goes, how would you use it in future projects? Maybe some journaling, maybe collage. What would you like? Anyway, thank you for watching. And please check out my other videos if you like this one. Until next time, keep creating.